Let's discuss upcast, downcast, and type safety in C-sharp. In this video, I assume you understand inheritance and polymorphism. If not, go watch the beginning programming playlist with objects. In the meantime, you've also probably seen some upcasts and some downcasts, but I want to talk to th about them explicitly in terms of what they mean to C-sharp runtime versus compile time. Get slightly more technical than we do when we teach this at a beginning level. You'll notice I have a base class here that has an int and then a base method which announces itself as a base method. I have derived, it inherits base. It adds a derived value, which is a float. Instead of an int, I just wanted to change it up, but both of these are 32 bits. And then it also has a method similar to the base method that announces itself, but instead it says derived instead of base. So hopefully this is a pretty straightforward example. Let me also explicitly say system.object here. When you do not type a base type for a class, the compiler will implicitly and automatically add system.object for you. I do not advocate putting this in explicitly every single time. Leave it off. I think it's clutter, but you need to be aware that everything inherits from object. That's, that's such a big big thing when you talk to object-oriented programmers. Oh, I just love my language because everything inherits from object. Well, well, okay, so everything's in one hierarchy, but what does that really mean? What does that really buy you? Anyway, everything's an object. Woohoo. Uh, here's main class main. Let's, let's have some fun with this. I'm going to say base being its new base derived d gets new derived and just like I've done in other videos let's draw the stack in the heap we go to blue here's our memory our RAM we have the stack and here's the heap we'll just symbolically divide the two like that now B is a reference let me do green I'll do green for B B is a reference and remember, new goes out to the heap, says, I need some room for a base. And a base, last time I checked, a base had this integer in it, so it takes 32 bits. So you see 32 bits anywhere? It's nice and clean, so let's just put it down here. This will be our base instance. 32 bits, I'll just put int here, and the value defaults to zero. That's nice that .NET, the runtime CLR, it does that for us. And now derived, we'll do derived in red. Derived is also on the stack. Here's D. It's a reference. Oh, you know what? I forgot to draw my reference from the base over to the instance of the base out on the heap. Okay, now derived. We say new derived. Here's our new derived. Now, what is a derived made of? A derived has everything a base has plus a float. And base has one int in it, so a derived will have an int and a float. All right, both are 32 bits. So when I say new derived and new goes out of the heap and has to find some room for derived, it has to grab 64 bits and the int portion from base, the int portion from base is higher in the address space than the float portion from derived. So I'll put the float portion down here. Oh, did I just go green again? Green. Let me get rid of that. Sorry. Let's do the float portion from drive. So here's the float portion. Ah, that says float. Okay, just trust me, it's hard to draw with a mouse. Uh, and then D will reference this instance out here. So everything good and dandy, we're used to this. Nothing new here. Now let's do some reference conversions. You can think of these as type conversions, but they're not type conversions, they are reference conversions. And I want to ma make that explicitly clear that all we're doing here is just kind of converting what the references are doing. Here, let's go on to the next line right here. And I'm going to say B gets D. And I'm going to hit Control-Shift-B and prove to you that the compiler will build this, build succeeded. Very good. This is a reference conversion. We have a reference that D will yield, this address value number in here that is referencing the address of this object down on the heap. And I'm telling .NET, I'm saying, hey, assign it to B. All right, now B, last time I checked, B is a base reference. But everything that a base is, a base is just an int, a derived is as well. If we look at derived, here's the base portion of derived sitting right here. So when I do this, B gets D, our float portion of D is still out there. It's just kind of masked away. It kind of disappears. The compiler can't see it. It's hiding. 
I also want to point out to you that nothing really changed about the data. Okay, the fact that I assigned D to B, well, that changes what B is referencing. B is now referencing the same object as D, and B's object, this this base we created on the heap, it is now up for garbage collection because nobody is referencing it. But other than that, no type conversions occur in here. The compiler nor the runtime had to really do anything. It's just if we look at this object through B, we can't see the float. If we look at it through D, sure enough, we can see the float. But through both references, we can at least see the base portion, which is this integer right here. Okay, so this is a safe conversion. The compiler does this for us automatically. We call this an implicit reference conversion. It's fine. The compiler knows this is safe. Nothing to worry about there. So, so no problems. Let me erase that. Now, I'm going to take B and D, and I'm going to swap them. So let me update our diagram first before I do that. Just erase this and bring it back to how I originally had it. B will originally reference this base we create out there. And then now when I take this B, change that to a D, and this D, and change it to a B, notice we get a red squiggly here. <coughs> okay, and says, hey, cannot implicitly convert type base to derived. An explicit, explicit conversion exists. Are you missing a cast? Now, if you ever hear me talk about the compile time type versus the runtime type, this is exactly what we're seeing here. First of all, we know that B is referencing a base. So to try to convert a base object to a derived object like we're doing here, we know that will not that's not legit, not cool. What's what's going on there? In fact, if we if the compiler implicitly allowed this to happen, and you can do this in other languages like C++, you can do a static cast and say, do it anyway. But uh, what what would happen is all of a sudden we'd have this float hanging out here. It's it's the compiler in the runtime that would view this float portion. I mean, that's a ghost float portion I'm trying to draw. I hope you're at high def, but we have this ghost float portion hanging out there. And where does it come from? Well, it's kind of like if I moved into a house and you moved into a house and we were next door neighbors and I took my fence and I put it five feet onto your property. You probably wouldn't be very happy about that, but that's essentially what we're doing here is we're saying, hey, I don't know what's out here in RAM, but I'm just going to move this over here. And there could be another object out there. It could be code. It could be something. Memory is just memory, and it's divided up and managed by the runtime and, and that sort of thing. And so if we if we just say, hey, we're going to look at this thing as a derived now, and oh, by the way, if we ever modify these floats, we'll go put a fence and, I don't know, install install pink flamingos onto your, your property. You probably... Wouldn't be happy about that. So the CLR, .NET, runtime, all that stuff, it says, you know what? We're just not going to allow that. Sure enough, unmanaged languages like C++, if you really want to do that, you can. All right? Use a static cast and go for it. But this is .NET. We're managed. We're not going to allow you to do that. Now, you may think that's restrictive, but one of the main goals of .NET is to help programmers not shoot themselves in the foot like I'm trying to do here. Here, all right. A lot of the time, our productivity is hindered by not really understanding the language and not really understanding what's going on. And so, as much as possible, C Sharp .NET they put up the bumpers in the bowling alley, so to say, and say, "Hey, if you want to go off, that's fine. We'll bump you back in. We won't allow you to do something stupid." And so, it won't allow us to do this. Now, we can tell the compiler, "Guess what? I want you to do it anyway." All right. So let's tell the compiler to do it. Compiler, do it. All right. Just do it. I, I know what I'm doing. Not base, sorry. Derived. Compiler, go ahead. And I want you to convert this reference and look at it as a derived now and then assign that over to here. And so the compiler will be like, okay, whatever. If you know what you're doing, that's fine. You've just turned the safety off on your weapon. We now build. We're fine. But then, at runtime, the CLR does some runtime checks when we add a cast here. And at runtime, it blows up and says, hey, uh, 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 you're trying to cast a, a base to a drive. I'm not going to allow that. I'm not going to allow that. Now, C++, static cast, go for it. All right, but, but .NET, managed language, no, we're not. It, what does that even mean? We're going to go out and muck around with this. Huh? All right, that's, that's what's going on there. That's, that's a check at runtime. So one thing to be aware of when you're doing casting is there's runtime costs. Now, I wouldn't all of a sudden quit casting because there's runtime costs. If there's a cost to anything and you think it's hindering you, use a profile to really find out. Don't just write crappy code to assume 
that because there's a cost is not worth paying. It's, it's kind of like like I'm trying to go to a movie today and and I have to pay a dollar extra to reserve seats online instead of going in there. But you know what? The movie just came out today and it's worth a little bit of cost to me to get the right seats. So it's okay to have some cost. That's that's fine.